Good morning. Welcome to Worship at the First Congregational Church of Clarendon. Today is Sunday, April 18th, 2021. Jesus, in his teaching, has said that our primary purpose is to love God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength, and to love our neighbor as ourself. Now, as we prepare for worship this morning, I'd like you to pause for a moment. Commit this time unto the Lord. Ask God to help you unleash the bonds that keep you chained to the world and all its distractions. That you might give your whole heart, soul, mind, and strength to the Lord during this time. Because as we are able to do this, God will also show us how to better express love for our neighbor, how to show kindness and mercy, forgiveness, compassion, and especially those who have just impossible burdens to bear. But that is the thrust of our worship today. How to care for others, how to give to those in need in ways that gives honor to God, not to us. Let us worship God. Good morning, kids. I brought with me today a box of Girl Scout cookies. You know, I'd love to share them with you, but you know, I, I can't reach through my computer and give them directly to you. All I can do on this YouTube video is, you know, show them to you. Because for you to get one, you'd either have to, you know, have me pick, leave them at church for you to pick up, or maybe I should mail a couple cookies to you, something like that. And you know, there's some point where our mission projects can feel like that too, that there's a separation between our giving and the recipient. We can't see them, we can't experience them directly. Well, this month, the reason why I brought the cookies is that our mission focus is Red Tulip Project and specifically a young lady who is working towards her gold award in Girl Scouting uh, is raising money to help furnish uh, this room downstairs in the basement of a Monarch Meadows house. Now she has with all sorts of help gotten walls and ceiling and flooring and and now she's trying to furnish this room. Well you and I may never get to see that room, you see, because uh, the women living at the house, they're using it for 
purposes with meeting with their families or having a meeting together. And yeah, this mission project is a concrete way we can help them, but it's their house while they're living there. And it's not for us to invade their privacy. So I can't directly give my cookies to you. And our giving to the mission project, we can't necessarily see the good it's going to do. Now, Jesus in our scripture lesson talks about giving in secret. So one hand doesn't know what the other hand is doing. Well, this sounds a little funny because how can that be? How can one hand not see the other hand? Well, what Jesus is really meaning is to say is that when we give, well, we want to give so that we're giving the praise to God, not for people saying, oh, what a good person this, this person is for giving. You see, Jesus says, don't give to people in need just so we can get the pat on the back and have people say how good we are. No, you give to ways that are honoring God, that are praising God. And that's the most important reason we have to giving to any mission project we have at this church. I hope we may all grow to be people who give, not to make us look good, but to make God look good. Let's have a prayer about that. Dear God, we praise you at all times for all the good that you are, for the good that you teach us. And so help us, Lord, as we give to others, that we do it in the right way, giving you the honor and glory and not us. Help us in all things that we may live our lives for you in Jesus Christ. Amen. Great to see you, even if it's through YouTube. And looking forward to seeing you soon. Have a great day. <laughs> bye bye. We continue worship now as we come as God's people in our time of prayer. Let's pray. God, our Father. Your love is without measure, limitless in your mercy and forgiveness. You are the standard that defines what it means to be righteous and kind and holy and good. To contemplate you is to discover the goal of our living, which is to align qualities that go with yours. We want to love you and worship you. We want to be changed by you, that we may become persons after your own heart, obedient to your will and living in accordance with your plan for us. We confess, Father, that our desire to be loved gets in our way of our desire to love. We want the acclaim. We want the praise. We want to be seen as good people, even apart from you working through us. And that sets us up for failure. It's not about practicing our righteousness. It's about giving you the praise in all we do. Forgive us when we want to take the attention off you and put it on ourselves. Because it's not about our goodness, but yours. We pray, Lord, that we may worship you through our giving. Let us be quick to offer you praise in all we do and refrain from pinning any medals on ourselves. Let your love be before us and through us and surround us 
so that our giving is but a reflection, but an expression of the love you have showered on us. As we pray, you show us how to use our gifts to care for those in need. Maybe it's a monetary gift, or it may be a meal prepared with love. It could be a phone call, a note of encouragement, a willingness to listen, or acting as an advocate on behalf of another in need. For you prepare us to serve and give out of resources we receive by faith in Jesus our Savior. Because we love you. Because you have given us our very life through the death and resurrection of your own son, Jesus. Help us give you the praise in all things, even the good we do for others. If we sound any trumpets, may it be to the praise and glory of your name. We lift up at this time those whose concerns are before us, those who are suffering in some way, those who need strength and comfort and care. Lord, help us be agents of your love. For this we pray in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This morning we are reading from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 6. We are reading verses 1 through 4. And Jesus says, Be careful not to do your acts of righteousness before men, to be seen by them. If you do, you will have no reward from your Father in heaven. So when you give to the needy, do not announce it with trumpets, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and on the streets, to be honored by men. I tell you the truth, they have received their reward in full. But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing so that your giving may be in secret. Then your Father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. May God bless a reading and understanding of his holy word. Amen. We have been reading through Jesus' teaching section in Matthew's Gospel called the Sermon on the Mount. Now, we had to skip ahead a few chapters in order to read through appropriate sections for Holy Week and Easter, but now we're going to go back to where we left off. Quick review, um, Sermon on the Mount is found in Matthew's Gospel, chapters 5 through 7. Now this body of teaching begins with Jesus describing the character of God's kingdom. Um, and this is what we call the Beatitudes. Now Jesus turns upside down our usual expectations of what it means to be blessed. The world calls a person blessed, who has health and wealth, who's attractive and personable, who has a good family, good career, and class privileges. Jesus instead said that blessed is one who is meek 
or mourning or merciful or hungers for righteousness. Why is that? God welcomes one whose spirit is, I say, bankrupt apart from God. One who is saddened by pervasive injustice. One who strives for peace in the midst of persecution. Because then we will turn wholeheartedly to God to find the resources, to find the strength we need. Jesus asks us to be as salt, providing others with a godly flavor, to be as light that points the way to God. Jesus says, let your light so shine before others that they will give praise to God. That is the nature, the, the quality that characterizes God's kingdom. And it's so different from the ways of the world. God's kingdom is also revealed in how we are obedient to follow God's code of laws. Right and wrong. They do not change according to the situation. Because God has given us absolutes. What we are to do and not to do. Now Jesus says he has come not to abolish the law of Moses, but to fulfill it. Now, Jews in his day didn't do a real good job of living in obedience to the law. But Jesus here reminds us that God's kingdom, it's not just about following the letter of the law. What really matters is what's going on in our hearts. It's that inside behavior that counts. Um, call it our motivations. And when we can look in God's law this way, we see that anger, yes, it tears apart a relationship. So even if the magnitude of anger is different from that of murder, in the eyes of God, the damage, the sin is still present in both cases. And conversely, Jesus also says that love it's about doing more than is required. Give someone a cloak along with your tunic. Lend even if you don't expect you're going to get repaid. Carry a burden beyond the obligatory mile. Go two miles. Anyone can love a friend, certainly. But as we forgive those who wrong us, as we love those who don't agree with us, as we pray for those who persecute us, we may be considered children of our Heavenly Father. And these are huge in becoming the kind of persons that God made us to be. So Jesus has been talking throughout chapter 5 about what it means to be righteous in God's eyes. And, and what qualities do we see in a person who belongs in God's kingdom? It's not about merely following our usual human standards because God calls us to be better than those whose good is, what can I say, an outward show. What Jesus says about motivations, um, it underlying our what all he said in chapter 5, and now it goes into, here we are in chapter 6. Because what Jesus is saying today is that we are to be careful. Because if the good we do for others is merely to get us showered with praise, it's not going to count for anything in God's eyes. So Jesus is really, we have two choices. We can do things for show so that others will reward us with pats on our back. Or we could do the good we do in secret so that only God knows about them. And God is ready to reward those who do good things with, shall we say, a pure heart in order to please God. And God's not out there to give us a reward if our motivation 
is just to get a claim from others. Now, as we saw in chapter five, that you know we we tend to look at the externals, uh, determining who's blessed, determining whether we've actually followed the law. God, by contrast, looks inside um, at our motivations, as I said, and and sees our desire to do the right thing despite whatever obstacles are in our way. Jesus asks us to live for God's approval rather than seeking to gain it from others. So the bigger picture for me is that of worship, that of giving God the praise in all things. Again, here we are, it's, it's motivation. You know, so what drives you to want to do good things? Um, what Jesus calls acts of righteousness. And who's the primary beneficiary? Is it you? Or is it to praise God? If it's you, well then, in a real sense, Jesus says, it's like you're setting yourselves on the throne in God's place. You're trying to get yourself the approval, and then if that's it, that's all you get. We are not here to be worshipped ourselves, but that we should worship God. And, and that all things then become an act of worship, a matter of praising God. You, you see the difference between the two. And so this motivation, uh, whether it's external or internal, whether it's to praise us or praise God, this has relevance in all we do day after day, as well as our Sunday worship. Yep, you might be paying attention, sitting in a pew or outside or in your, in your house watching this on YouTube, and if your heart is engaged, then you will be praising God. But, you know, if you're just kind of half paying attention and it's going in one ear and out the other, well, then you probably won't get a whole lot out of this. And God also won't be glorified. And it isn't all about, I, I say, style of worship. That's not nearly as important as why you are engaged in worship. What's going on inside of you that has moved you to want to give God praise? What's your primary reason to be a church? Is it to worship God? Or do you just want to be seen as a righteous person by others? I mean, certainly you and I want to look good before others. There, there's no harm in that. Uh, we want to be seen as helpful or generous or kind or faithful, all these good things. And you see a need in the community. You step forward to volunteer, and that's a good thing. But only you and God are, know, are going to know by your actions, by your worship, whether you're doing it just to get accolades from others or whether your heart is in it for God alone. So Jesus teaches when you give to the needy. <laughs> Do not announce it with trumpets in the synagogues and on the streets to be honored by men. I tell you the truth. They will have received their reward in full. It's, it's like our mission projects that we have here in church. May your left hand not know what your right hand is doing, or vice versa if you're left-handed. Okay. May your giving be in secret. But you know, as they say this, I want to go back for a moment to verse 16 in chapter 5, because... What Jesus says there seems to be a little bit of a contradiction to what he says here in chapter 6. Now, so what Jesus says in chapter 5, he says, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good deeds and give praise to your Father in heaven. 
but wait a minute. Shine your light, but also don't let others know what you are doing. Give to the needy in secret. Well, how do we shine our light and yet hide it at the same time? Again, we have to go back to our motivation to know why we are giving and what we are seeking to do when we give. We can't do good things that please God if our intention is again to heap up accolades for ourselves. And yet as we do good things out of our love for the Lord, others may recognize it. They may see it. Not that we're recording it and going, woo hoo here I am, look at the good I'm doing, wow, wow, no. It's because that which is shining forth from us in our praise of God may indeed allow another to give praise and glory to God too. One honors us, yes. The other honors God and being a witness to him. And you know, I may think I am doing the right thing by letting my light shine as I give, as I help others. And may I, maybe I think I am all about honoring God and not myself. But you know, I'm not gonna really know unless I'm willing to bring all of that before the Lord in prayer. I have to pray to be sure that my desires are in line for what God wants of me, that my good actions are deriving out of my love for God, and then also to confess times when huh, I just wanted to look good. As we choose to confess, choose to listen, even choose to be corrected by God as it is needed, God will lead us to greater faith and maturity. And you know, each one of us has different growing points in this regard. You may have grown up being confident, being assured. Um, you had a strong foundation in love through those who meant the most to you as you were growing up. But then on the other hand, maybe you lacked reinforcement as a kid. <clears throat> maybe you feel you have to work harder to gain any sense of self-worth for yourself. We're not all perfect in being raised with a positive self-attitude. We're not all of us free from wanting to get a boost in areas where we feel we are lacking. And don't we all need Jesus who died for us, for our sins on the cross? But I say, rather than worry that you too much want others to praise you, be willing to talk with God about that. How do you continue to grow in good character? Because you are deeply loved by God. And that is true whether you've had many years of committed servanthood or whether you feel I barely understand the Bible and what God is asking of me. That truth is still there. Because this is what Jesus wants us to know. If your motivation, your reason to do good things is to impress other people, that's the only reward you're going to get. But God has a bigger reason for us to follow God's word and do what is right and that's to do it for God keeping our focus on him alone now in the scripture we heard today Jesus gives us but one example to support this truth and next week we're going to be hearing about several other examples that Jesus also gives with the same idea in mind so Jesus says, when you give to the needy, do not announce it. 
I'm going to say that people here at this church, I think, are really good at giving to our mission projects here at church. We had a, a lot of supplies out in the back hall for Next Step. Thank you to all of you. And during the month of April, our mission focus will be on helping to complete a basement um, meeting room for the Red Tulip, uh, Red um, Monarch Meadows House that's just around the corner from us. Um, this has been the Gold Award project of one of our area Girl Scouts. She has raised over $9,000 in order to get contractors who have put up walls, who have drawn a ceiling, who have put uh, flooring down, and, and now she's hoping to get the room furnished. So once the room is complete, the women who are residents at the Monarch Meadows House will have a place apart to spend some quiet time with family members, have a private meeting. And all these contributions that we collect will go through our Good Samaritan Fund, so your checks may be written out that way. And thank you if you've already contributed or plan to do so. Because Red Tulip provides a great service within Geauga County for women who are overcoming their past addictions and endeavoring to get their lives on a brand new footing. So in your giving, as in any other good thing you do, Jesus is saying, don't make a big deal out of it. Don't flaunt your giving. Don't try to show off how generous you are. Certainly nobody at church is going to advertise if you give a large donation to a mission endeavor. And I never know how much any person chooses to give or whether you have given at all. But instead, in all ways, may your giving, may your service, may the way you interact with people be an act of worship to God. And as you give your heart to him, God will shower down abundant blessings to you. May God be praised in all we do. Amen. who is guiding you and keeping you strong. When you go to sleep, may the Holy Spirit tend to your body, soul, and mind. And as each new day dawns, may the grace 
of Jesus Christ be at your side. Go in peace to love and serve your neighbor, honoring and praising God in all you do. Amen.